My name is Raven, professional wrestling superstar, former world heavyweight champion, and I want you to choose your four. This is Pro Wrestling Rushmore. Quote the Raven, nevermore. Choose your four. It's Pro Wrestling Rushmore. Hello humanoids, this is Ian from Squared Circle History, and I want you to choose your four. It's Pro Wrestling Rushmore. Welcome to the only podcast that picks a topic and allows you, the fans, to choose who is on our ultimate Mount Rushmore of a given topic. And this week, our topic is the Mount Rushmore of Masked Wrestlers. Joining me, as always, is the ever-opinionated, but never duplicated, Brian. What's happening, guys? Brian, what wrestling shirt are you wearing today? Oh, you know, here's the thing. Yeah. I don't have a ton of wrestling shirts, Ian. Yeah. But I picked this one out out of the depths of hell. <laughs> I, I brought it back just so I could wear something different, man. Because, yeah. you know, like I don't have a lot of them. I'm not yeah. like you. Well, well, I'm sorry. But I have, you know, I'm wearing the Sandman Blood, sweats, Blood Sweat and Beers t-shirt. I like it. And look at the holes on this thing. It tells you how old it is. Are they cigarette burns from the Sandman? How can they be cigarette burns? It's under the armpit. I mean... Oh. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, I couldn't it's see where old. these holes were. I'm Look, improvising. Have, you know, my collar looks like bacon, and there's holes in it, but, but I want to wear it. something different, yeah. something old school. It, kind uh, of shock you a little bit. Yeah, you know, and uh, I'm sure some of the, the hipsters would call that vintage. Yes, I guess. Or Michael Cole. What? Vintage Sandman shirt. <laughs> what, are you, what are you wearing? Oh, I see finally, what you're wearing. Yeah, finally. My Grudge Match brand Jushin Liger shirt. It's Jushin Liger's mask, patterned after the Motorhead logo. Uh, I'm choosing to wear the tank top version right now, but I also have the t-shirt version. Maybe I need the hoodie version for the holidays. So I don't you, even I don't even know if that's a thing. You have two versions of the same shirt? Yes, I do. Why? Because I love this shirt. I love the design. I think it's I think it's awesome. But I mean it's a t shirt and a tank top, I mean. Yeah. Well, if it's if it's one of them has you know, sleeves and the other one doesn't. Yeah, but if it's 95 degrees out or 82 degrees out, you can still wear a t-shirt and be fine. Yeah, but I get too warm. No, you don't. Yeah, sure, yeah. That's because you wore that stupid, you know, soft cotton. Yeah, but the soft style would keep me cool. What about that head bandana you got on there looking like Johnny Lawrence? No. Is that, is that cotton? Is that, no. Is that soft style? Is that your Halloween costume? Of course it's soft style. How could I wear anything less? Oh, so you're wearing it because of Terry Funk. I love, I love the funker. And to keep the hair, you know, out of the way. Reading the list, as always, is the lovely, the talented, Sarah. Hey, guys. All right. So with all that said, let's begin construction on the Mount Rushmore of Masked Wrestlers. First up is Pat R. the Superstar with Kane, Mankind, Rey Mysterio, Jushin Thunder Liger. Okay, so the first name mentioned is... That's gotta be Kane! What do you think about Kane being the first masked wrestler mentioned on our list this week. Yeah, I could see Kane as, you know, one of the best masked wrestlers. He's been around forever, on and off with his mask. Yeah, which is very strange. We've seen that a few times, though. We've seen that with another name that Pat R. mentioned, Rey Mysterio, who started off with the mask, made it iconic, then he lost it, but then he put it back on. Yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, he's not hasn't been like Kane. Kane's been, uh, you know, he had it on and off like three or four times, right? On Very strange, yeah. At least Mysterio was just sandwiched in between with it off, and, and he's never had it off since. Yeah, that's true. I think he whizzed the bed. I'm sure he does. Yeah. I'm sure he does. Also mentioned on there is Mankind, one of Mick Foley's three faces. Do you think of Mankind when you think of masked wrestlers? I think he'll be on a lot of people's lists. <laughs> I, you know... But how could you not? I mean, it's Mick Foley. I mean, he's got so many legendary moments. And... I know, but when I think of a masked wrestler, I think, you know, fully masked. Like, okay, you knew what Mankind looked like. You knew what Vader looked like. Sure. You know? And I'm sure, like, Vader will be on some people's lists. 
He's on more than a few lists. He might be on mine. And also on more than a few lists, of course, Jushin Thunder Liger, the legendary uh, masked wrestler who, jeez, he, he made a... Uh, he had a long career. Long career. From the yeah. late 80s and just retiring this year. Was it this year? This year, yeah. Damn. In January. Who he picked a good own? year to retire, huh? Who was his opponent? His last opponent? Yeah. It was in like a multi-person tag. Well, that sucks. Yeah. The night, the night before he fought Minoru Suzuki. Was that on like New Japan show or something? Yeah. yeah. Like, was it on, what was it? The New year? Japan I mean, World. Like, just the world show? So it wasn't yeah. like on their uh, No, it was, it was, at, it was on Wrestle Kingdom. He, oh. he wrestled on Wrestle Kingdom and then his last match <laughs> was the next night on New Year's Dash. No, that's what I was asking. Oh, okay. Right, so at least it wasn't just on a, uh, you know, their version of Superstars or something, you know? No, no, no <laughs> right. nothing like that. That's, no, that's no he went out with honor. I mean, he's still, he's still jobbed, but I mean, he went out with honor. Mm. Most guys on the way out. Doing you know, the favor. Well, they'll do, yeah, they'll do the favor. The, the ever important favor. Sarah, who do we have next? Next, we have Bobby on the Beat with Mil Mascaris, Rey Mysterio, Kane, and Ultimo Dragon. So, Mil Mascaris, there's a guy right there. He, he was an international superstar, you know, hailing from Mexico and coming to the United States, wrestling for the WWA in California. He uh, introduced a high-flying style to America with the plancha, you know, the, the high-flying dives to the floor. Um, and he's never been unmasked. And he was even in movies with the mask on. Bobby. Bob. Le- level with me, Bobby. You've never seen a Mil Mascaris match. <laughs> the only time you've seen Mil Mascaris was probably in the Royal Rumble. 1997. Yep, you got it. Uh, like, no, come on, man. You've never seen a Mil Mascaris match. I can guarantee it. Other than that. He's on Bobby's list because of notoriety. And, you know, whatever. I mean, he probably was a great wrestler. I don't know. Maybe Bobby's a big Mil Mascaris fan. Maybe he's like a secret connoisseur of Mil Mascaris matches. Hey, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. And there was a time when... He's hiding it from me. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Mil Mascaris was a big star for some time in, in the, the late WWF and, like, the, the early stages of WWF. But he, uh... He never wanted a job. Oh, was that the problem? No job. No job. No oh, yab. That, that was him. That's him. No job. No job. All yep. right. Never wanted a job because he, he thought that it would hurt his... That was Alberto Del Rio's uncle or something? Yes. His uncle. Yes. All right. See, I remember the Pritchett story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Bobby also mentions Ultimo Dragon. Ultimo Dragon was, uh, was big in the early 90s. New Japan junior heavyweight boom. Uh, and he was also the ven- the inventor of the Asai Moonsoul. Do you know that for a fact? Yeah, because that's his real last name. Asai? Yeah. Or Moonsoul? <laughs> Asai, like the berry. Oh. Well, the, the berry? The berry. Ever... Oh, Akai. Akai, Asai, Asai. It's, it's Asai? It's Asai, yeah. Wow, look at that. I, I didn't even know I was right. Uh, really? Yeah. See, I call it Akai. People Akai. think I'm an idiot. <laughs> Like, hey, you have any of that Kai juice? Only well, that they're gonna ask you. Do you have any of that moon salt juice? The, <laughs> the Ultimo Dragon juice. <laughs> no, I like that pick. And do you know why he's called Ultimo Dragon? Because Ultimo stands for ultimate, and he's the ultimate dragon. Okay, but why is he called the ultimate dragon? I don't know. Because what? supposedly, he was the last student of Bruce Lee. Oh, really? That's what they say. Yeah, but just because he was the last student doesn't make, make him ultimate. No, and it doesn't I'm sure mean, there were better students than him. And it doesn't even mean that it's, it's a real story, because we know that the giant was the son of Andre the giant, right? Paul White? Yeah. That's what they said. And they killed the giant in Halloween Havoc. That is and, my boy! Uh, don't, don't do that. You freak me out with the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> How about Halloween? It's a Halloween episode. I want to bring back memories of the, <laughs> the monster truck match. <laughs> yes, the monster truck match from Halloween Havoc. 1995. Legendary. Watch it. Legendary. Sarah, who's next? The next submission is from Mikey from the Streets. Mankind, Kane, Rey Mysterio, and Jushin Liger. So these are all names that we've already heard. Um, so, what do we say? Uh, do you have any man favorite Mankind memories? <laughs> I don't know. Like, Boiler Room Brawl was cool just okay. because of the... Uh, it was a different match. 
Yeah, and, and he, he was really the first person to really take The Undertaker to his limit. Yeah, and then Paul Bearer turned on The Undertaker, so yeah. that was kind of a big moment. So it was the first time ever. Oh, man. One of many. Murderer! Murderer! <laughs> <laughs> It's too, bad. it's too bad Paul Bearer didn't wear a mask so we could talk about him more on the show. I just want to hear you say murderer. Murderer! <laughs> you imagine if I got a parrot to say it just like Paul Bearer? <laughs> I'd be wanted for a lot of crime. <laughs> um, and while we're at it, any uh, any favorite Jushin Liger matches? Yeah. What's well, Sarah? Brian Pillman, man. Brian Pillman, that's right. <clears throat> Super Brawl. Legendary matches. And, yeah. I, mean, I mean, Jushin Liger. I think it's because the first time I saw him as a kid, yeah, like in the states, that was the first match I saw him wrestle, and I was like, "Wow, who is this guy?" You yeah, know? and I mean, you look at him, especially as a kid. I mean, he's he looks like a superhero. Yeah, the presentation was there. He's got the horns. He's got the cape. And, uh, no, and then he went on to be the the booker of the junior heavyweights in New Japan, and mid '90s New Japan junior heavyweights. That is must see stuff. Especially the Super J Cup, nineteen ninety four. Who we got? Who's in there? Oh, jeez. Some we've, names. Well, we like three we've names. Got, we've got Jushin Liger. We've got the Great Sasuke. We've got Black Tiger Eddie Guerrero. Okay. We've got Wild Pegasus Chris Benoit. Tiger we've, Mask. Tiger Mask was not in that oh. tournament. No, no, he didn't make it into that tournament. <clears throat> and the the next year, you know who made it all the way to the finals? I don't. Gato. He was a, he was a junior heavyweight. Yeah, I would have never known it. Yeah, yeah. Gato. Gato. Yeah. All right, Sarah. Who do we have next? Death by Lariat votes for Jushin Liger, Hayabusa, The Great Sasuke, and Kimonito. Okay, so we have some new names on here. First of all, the FMW legend, Hayabusa. Do you have any memories of Hayabusa, Brian? Yeah, I have memories of Hayabusa and. Um, Hakushi against RVD and Sabu. I know, I know, it wasn't Hakushi. I know it oh, wasn't yeah. his name then, but it was Hakushi, the, the person. Jinsai Shinzeki. There you go. Whatever. Bless you. <laughs> uh, anyway, like, that's that's the first time I saw Hayabusa, but I remember the build-up for that match. It was insane. Yes. And I think that match kind of disappointed a little bit, just because of, you know, I was hoping for so much more because of the build-up. Sure. But it was still an excellent match. Yeah. And, like, Hayabusa's presentation was awesome. Oh, yeah. Like like Liga's. Absolutely. I mean, if you've never seen Hayabusa, go out of your way to see some of his matches. I mean, he, he did it all. I mean, he did the deathmatch style. He did the high-flying style. He could wrestle the main event style. He, whew. Was he all scarred up? His stomach was all, all scarred, scarred up. All scarred up from yeah. the barbed wire matches and exploding barbed wire matches, cage matches with a Tushi Onita, uh, but yeah, absolute legend and uh, very, very underrated name. So it's cool to see a mention of his on here. It's probably like a god in Japan, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. As is the great Sasuke, who made it all the way to the finals of the Super J Cup in 1994 against the wild Pegasus Chris Benoit. But I'm sure you remember the great Sasuke from WWF and ECW. Barely legal. Barely legal, yep. Yeah. That's Brief that. runs there. Um, he feuded with Taka Michinoku sure did WWF right yes he did yeah and he was also in a WCW NWO World Tour the N64 game yeah but they called him Black Ninja hey. and that's where I first got exposed to him nice. was like on from that video game I didn't know that was the great Sasuke at the time because I thought his name was Black Ninja <laughs> but I mean my my hey who's this guy impersonating <laughs> the Black Black Ninja <laughs> my fondest memory of the great Sasuke though was the uh, Bailey Eagle pay-per-view yeah, and that I'm, was a great match. Absolutely. Oh, and he's I mean, he's still going still going to this day. I mean, he's uh excellent, excellent junior heavyweight wrestler. I mean, his dives over the top rope. I mean, jeez. He's still doing that. He's some great stuff. Yeah, and Really? Yeah, and he's doing like death matches. It's not him. It's you don't think it's him, somebody no, you else. You don't know what's on the match, it's on the mask. That's true. That's true. How about the only mini on our list? Kemonito. Is that the guy I got drop kicked off the apron? Yes, it is. Yes, oh, it is. Boy. The guy in the little gorilla costume, the uh, the mascot there. I think we're getting trolled. And say, <laughs> no, he's a gorilla, not a troll. <laughs> Might as well be a troll. <laughs> oh, boy. Sarah, who do we have next? Next up is Shep from Shepland, Rey Mysterio, Pentagon Jr., Jushin Liger, and Vader. 
Okay, so we have the first time or the first mention for Pentagon Jr. or Penta L0M as he's going by now for copyright reasons. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I guess um, I, I believe AAA in Mexico owns the name Pentagon Jr. No. So he can't use that name, so now he's Penta the Zero Fear. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he's featured on AEW pretty much every week. I can see why. The, my son likes those guys, too. You know, the well, younger the younger kids. Right. It's like us, you know, when we were young, like in the, the guys, you know, like you said, uh, Jushin Liger and yeah. Psychosis. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Rey Mysterio. But, yeah, I can see why he's on that list. Not for me, but for someone younger, why not? And like Hayabusa, he's got the, the combination of... Um, Wearing a mask and wearing face paint. So, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, very, very unique. Both of those guys do? Both of those guys. Yeah, Hayabusa wears uh, the eye makeup. No, I'm talking about uh, Ray Phoenix and Penta Loco. Oh, no, Jr. Ray Phoenix. I don't think Ray Phoenix was face paint, but... Right, but then, didn't but Penta Shep put Ray Phoenix? No. Oh, it was Penta he put. He put Ray Mysterio. Oh, all right. Ray Mysterio and Penta. Penta, all right. I yeah. thought I, got, I was getting Penta and Ray Phoenix confused. Okay. And also featured on Shep's list is the man they call Vader. Yeah, and like I said earlier, you know, you know what he looked like. It's not like it's covering his whole face. Yeah, it was like a, it was like a red jock strap. It was still a mask, so I gotta give it to him. And he was still a monster. Yeah, a red yeah. jock strap. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, also the the father of Frankie Stacchino on Boy, Boy Meets, Meets World. World. Yeah. Forget, forget to go to trash. <laughs> About when Vader beat up Gorilla Monsoon, give him the the Vader bomb. Yeah, poor Gorilla. Yeah, Papa Gino. Probably, Papa Gino, <laughs> probably looking up at Vader. Will you stop? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Vader. Vader's somebody that uh, I've definitely grown to appreciate more as I've gotten older. He's uh, just a very believable heavyweight and just hard hitting. And um, yeah, Vader was awesome. Same. He's a monster. He is. He was absolutely poor guy. Yeah, poor Vader. Poor Vader. I'm sure he'll wind up in the WWE Hall of Fame relatively soon. Now that he's dead. Yeah, I know. It's crazy how that happens. I love um, it. All right, Sarah, who do we have next? Next to the list from Package Pile Driver shirts, Jushin Liger, Hayabusa, Ultimo Dragon, and Super Leather. Oh, a mention for Super Leather. You remember Super Leather? Is that Leatherface? Leatherface. Is that Corporal Kirshner? Corporal Kirshner, Same yes. Same guy. So why, why was he super leather and leather face? It was another case of, you know, uh, a company, in this case, the movie company, owning the name Leatherface. Oh. So he had to, you know, change his name, so he became super leather. Okay. But, it, yeah, but but there there's a there's a lot of cases of that in Japan. They have, there was a Freddy Krueger. There was a Mike Myers. There was a Crypt Keeper. Really? Yeah, they just, like, they, they take these horror movie monsters and uh, put them in hardcore matches and throw them in barbed wire. Well, I've, I've heard that Leatherface was a, a legend in Japan, just like Hayabusa. A lot of those masked wrestlers, right? A I lot guess. of them, yeah. And and there was definitely the mystique of Super Leather because he was, you know, a Canadian wrestler who was, you know, big in Japan and because he was running through the crowd with a chainsaw. Yeah, but there was no chain on that chainsaw, was there? No, but when you're, when you're in the crowd and somebody's running at you with a chainsaw... How one... <laughs> Come on. How about when Rick Steiner tried to kill people in the, <laughs> the Chamber of Horrors match? <laughs> yes. On, on Halloween Havoc with the chainsaw. Halloween Havoc 91 just waffling Abdul the Butcher in the head with the chainsaw without the chain. Poor Abby. I know. And it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. But yeah, super leather. That's pretty cool. It's the only time he gets mentioned on this list, but I never thought we'd be talking about... You know, I kind of had an idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know a lot of Japanese people on the on these lists, or at least you know, big time, Japanese wrestling fans. Right. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah what? That guy's not from Japan. Package pile driver. Oh. No. Oh. No. I I believe he's he's from Europe. Oh really? Yeah. Like what part? UK. UK, I would say. <laughs> okay. Okay. I just may. Down by the bay, eating hay. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> listen to what I say. <laughs> Sarah, what do we have next? First time submission from Dizzle Wizzle 983. Ultimo Dragon, The Great Sousuke, Jushin Liger, and Super Delphin. Ever see any Super Delphin matches? A Super Dolphin? 
Well, that's like, yeah, that's the translation of it. But yeah, Super Delphin, the this wrestling guy's, dolphin. This guy's definitely from Japan. Super Delphin is definitely, yeah, yeah. Japanese wrestling. Is he like Shock Boy? Uh, yeah, you could say that. Yeah, except he's a dolphin. All right, so him and Shock Boy would have a good feud. Yeah, that could be Team Aquatic. Right. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> the gay Shock versus the Shock Boy. <laughs> <laughs> you think all dolphins are gay? They're gay sharks. Dolphins are gay sharks. That's what Jeffrey says. Jeff who? Jeff. Oh, Jeffy Jeff. That's what he says. Says that dolphins are just gay sharks. Oh, okay. Well, then. is there, there maybe some truth to that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to get some confirmation. I mean, who See, am I to say? Who are you? You, to say? you just may. <laughs> Listen to what I say. <laughs> <laughs> so this cat in the hat themed episode this week. <laughs> But as I'm looking at this list, uh, all four names here on There's a Wizzle 983's list, uh, they all competed in the Super J Cup. So that there are a lot of you know wrestling tape traders, critics, probably Mike Tanay as well, that say that the Super J Cup 1994 is the greatest wrestling show ever, <clears throat> start to finish. Who's on that that I may know? Dolfino. Dolfino? No, he's from Goodfellas. Do- <laughs> What's his Super name? Dolphin? Super Dolphin. Yeah, he's there. Jushin Liger, Great Sasuke, Ultimo Dragon, Chris Benoit. Jeez. It's a... Uh, it's, it's a stacked, uh, stacked tournament. I'll have to check it out. Is it on YouTube? No, you probably have to watch it on New Japan World. Well, I don't have that. Or if you're like a tape trader or a DVD trader, you know. The yeah. tape trader. Yeah, I'm still trading tapes. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going online. I'm just like posting all my, uh, my recorded VHS <laughs> tapes. I'm like, hey, I'll trade you Shotgun Saturday Night for the Super J Cup, freaking '95. Oh man, how many, how many Shotgun Saturday Night episodes are you gonna get? You gotta make sure that trade's even. <laughs> oh, Do you have a favorite mask design? Do I have a favorite mask design? Yeah. I like Psychosis' mask. Yeah, Psychosis you like the horn is, mask. Is, is, is. Like a bull. Yeah. So if you wrestled, would you, like, if you if you were a masked wrestler, would you be like a bull? Like giant horns? Like some fat? No. Would you call me a bull? No, you just said you like the horns. You jerk. <laughs> no, I don't like all the horns. I mean, no, I think it's a cool design. Doesn't mean I like horns. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the Jushin Liga one was cool, but yeah. doesn't mean, like, I just want my horns on my masks. Okay. I don't know. Like maybe just give me a plain mask, like Mr. X. Okay. I was scared as shit of Mr. X when I was plain a kid. white mask. Is Mr. X on that list anywhere? Just wait, Brian. Is he? Just wait. Oh man, I don't want that long. <laughs> what do you think are the advantages and disadvantages of wearing a mask? Um. So if you're ugly, you can hide your face. That's that's a good one. <laughs> that's the first one. Disadvantages. I mean, I guess you get really sweaty in there, right? And it yeah, yeah. You probably have a hard time breathing too, it unless stinks. <laughs> and, and depending on how big your eye holes, uh, how, depending on how big your eye holes are, you might have a hard time seeing. But I would imagine if you're, if you're, you know, working a match, it might be easier to call the match if you're wearing a mask. So yeah, of course they can't see you talking, so you probably call the whole match. Sure. Yeah. And uh, if you're in a first blood match, nine times out of ten. Yeah, but that's, you that's, a mask. That shouldn't count. Uh, I, you I should know. not have a first blood match if you have a mask on. But it happened with Steve Austin and Kane. Yeah, and Kane also wore sleeves and stuff, so that was unfair. <laughs> unfair or genius? If Austin came out wearing a full body suit, maybe he still would have been the champion. No, it was stupid. She shouldn't have. Austin should not accept that match. No. No. Well, there were a few matches no. that he didn't accept. It didn't make sense. That's, you know, wrestling okay. doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense? I hate it. You hate wrestling? <laughs> Wow, that's a hell of a realization. <laughs> On the 10th episode of our wrestling podcast. <laughs> Sarah, who do we have next? Next we have Yankees 1989, who votes for Vader, Rey Mysterio, Kane, and Mankind. What do you think of Rey Mysterio still going to this day and now wrestling with his son? I think Yankees 89 is a stupid name. It's <laughs> <laughs> not what I asked. <laughs> I know it's not what you asked, but it's what I feel at this moment. Okay, well... I just want to express that okay. to everyone. Okay, now that I got that out. <laughs> <clears throat> Rey, Rey Mysterio, Mysterio yeah. is a legend. Rey Mysterio is going to make this, this list guaranteed. 
I yeah. guarantee you that. Oh, of course. That's one of the one and two. That yes, definitely. But and think about think about Rey Mysterio. Think about his legacy. Think yeah, about, no, you know, from ECW to WCW. Like you said, he's still going right now with Dominic. It's it's a, a great run. The guys, the best masked wrestler, bond on. Um, yes. I don't know. I think he should stop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm sick of seeing him. Yeah, and I'm sick of hearing about like his knee surgeries and things like that. Like no, I don't pay attention to that. Oh, okay. He talks about that a lot. Well, maybe not he talking about it, but you know he's he gets injured a lot. Like Michael Cole talking about it. Sure, vintage Michael Cole. <sighs> I see. Yes, yes. Well, Rey Mysterio, of course, competed in not my favorite match, but definitely in my top five favorite matches. Uh, Rey Eddie Mysterio, Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero, Halloween Havoc, 1997. A damn near perfect match. Not even just cruiserweight match, just perfect match in general. That was the same year Bobby saw Mil Mascaris wrestle for the first and only time. That is the truth. Yes, that that's monumental. 1997. <laughs> wow. That's great, Bobby. We should celebrate. Sarah, who do we have next? Nikki Homicide submits Mankind, Jushin Liger, Vader, and El Generico. So El Generico, Sami Zayn's... Luchador gimmick on the independence before he was signed to WWE and went on to bigger and brighter things. But, um. El yeah. Generico was in Ring of Honor, right? Yeah. Yes, he was. Which tells you that I really don't know much about him. <laughs> yes, we have established that Ring of Honor is not your forte, so when, whenever we do the Ring of Honor episode, we'll, we'll have to figure something out. No, you'll have to figure something <laughs> out. I won't be here for it. <laughs> but El Generico, I've seen. You know, live compete in some excellent matches. Uh, him against Kevin Steen slash Owen, Z, and uh, teaming together to face the Briscoes. They just they just had some awesome matches. Jack and Jerry. No, they must have been old. Not dude. Jack and Jerry. Jay and Mark. Oh. Ring of Honor. Remember? Didn't I? Don't remember. Sarah's shaking her head like, no, you don't. <laughs> and I'm looking at. Her, I'm like, no, I really don't. Like, <laughs> Weren't there two other Briscoe brothers, like fat guys? Oh, that I don't know. Who, oh, you mean like from Ring of Honor? Yeah. Yeah, they had, I believe it was, I know their dad joined them, and I want to say their cousin. And then I think at one point, even like Bushwhacker Luke. Was it Briscoe? Somehow wound up in their family no, too. No, like two fat men, or guys, or kids. They were young. They, I don't know if they were called the Briscoes. What the hell was the names? They were in Ring of Honor. They were supposed to be really good, but they were like... The Bravados? No. It doesn't sound familiar. The Backseat Boys? No, they weren't fat. I know they weren't, but I'm just thinking of all tag teams that began with B. It'll, I'll come, it'll come to me. I'm gonna... Alright, just shout it out. Then. Go through you know, Ring of Honor tag teams and get it, because now it's gonna piss me off. Sarah, who do we have next? Danny Love has on his list Jushin Liger... Rey Mysterio, Psychosis, and Mankind. So, we have a vote for Psychosis there. Uh, very unique mask, uh, like we were talking about before. He's got the horns on it, like Jushin Liger does. He's got a whole bodysuit, also like Jushin Liger. Just a very, you know, you look at him, and he looks like a supervillain in this case. And he was the supervillain when he feuded with Rey Mysterio from Mexico to ECW to WCW. I don't think they fought in WWE, though. No? I don't think the so. Mexicals? Yeah, I don't know if they fought Rey Mysterio. Did you like him without the mask? Psychosis? No, I think he lost all of the... Um, all of his marketability went away when he lost the mask. Yeah, I, I think, think that was a true. terrible decision. Just like Rey Mysterio. Eric Bischoff wanted Rey Mysterio to lose his mask in that match with Eddie Guerrero at Halloween Havoc. And Rey said, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't but, blame him. but then he eventually lost it. He eventually lost it to Kevin Nash. Yeah, that was stupid. Yeah, man. then Ray, Ray looking like uh, Pauly Shore. He looked like a little boy, man. He did. Pauly, you think he looked like Pauly Shore? I think he looked a little bit like Pauly Shore. Huh. A little bit. Maybe. How about, uh, Maybe not. Is Juventud Guerrero on anybody's list? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he is. is on here as well. <clears throat> the uh, the Lucha Invasion, thanks to Conan, bringing in the likes of Ray, Psychosis, Juventud Guerrero. Another name that will be mentioned later, La Parca. Uh, Sarah, who's next? Next is a submission from TTD Wrestling. Rey Mysterio, Kane, Jushin Liger, and Vader. TTD Wrestling, again, I saw they have those Hasbro prints on sale. If you're a fan of the old WWF Hasbros, 
definitely check out TTD Wrestling on Instagram because he's coming out with some excellent artwork. And he mentions the heavy hitters there, Rey Mysterio, Kane, Jushin Liger, Vader. Do you have a favorite Kane moment? Of course. Let's hear it. <laughs> Let's hear it. It's not the one you're thinking of, because I know what yours is. How about it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, what about when Kane beat up Pete Rose? Is that your favorite? It's not because it's mine. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, my favorite is definitely his debut. Yeah, that's why I figured that was for you. Yeah. So, no. <laughs> That Kane Pete Rose moment was made because of Pete Rose. Yeah. That promo before Kane came out, um, that was all Pete Rose. Yeah. That is not my favorite moment. Okay. My favorite moment was when he uh, used the voice box. Of course. <laughs> and he challenged the Undertaker <laughs> to a match, and if he lost, he would light himself on fire. No, that was the that was the match with Austin. That, that was, was Austin. Yeah. Oh, that was, that was the that first was, blood match. That was the first blood match. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was a very unique presentation. The uh, the voice box that he didn't need because he wasn't actually burned. Right. <laughs> if I lose, I will light myself on fire. You know what that would make Steve Austin? What? A murderer! <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. You have any favorite uh, Vader moments? Yeah. When he called himself a fat piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> and retired. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. I'm just a piece of shit. <laughs> Fat piece of shit. Not one of Vader's finest moments, but that's, you know, that's when he lost his mask match against Kane. Well, he lost his mask match because he's a piece of shit. <laughs> but, you know, he lost his mask and then he had it back on the next night, so... What's yours? With no explanation. What's your favorite Vader moment? My favorite Vader moment, huh? I loved his feud with Sting. I love the strap match against Sting where he uh, he won the title. I love the slugfest between him and Stan Hansen where Stan Hansen punches his eyeball out. You ever see that? No. Oh, you're going to have to see that. That's disgusting. No, I really don't want it. Oh, it's disgusting. His eye, he's like holding his eye in place. Did you like the Sting match with the... Uh... The White Castle of Fear. Castle. That was the strap match. That That's was the strap so match. Yeah. It was, but it was such a violent match because they were just whipping each other with this leather strap and they got welts all over their backs. It was a very hard hitting battle. I bet it was. It was. It was. <laughs> it was great stuff. I love when Vader would just beat the crap out of Antonio Inoki. That's a lot of Vader moments. I'm asking I, I'm you for one. You, I, Give I, me I, one. Uh, the the sting match I love the sting match so that's it just that whole yeah. match in general and I like the, I like the big mastodon helmet that shoots the the smoke out of it you didn't like when he called himself a fat piece of shit no I didn't care for that really no like well I mean it was I mean it was funny because nobody expected it it's like oh wow okay that was his greatest moment <laughs> that was like his crowning crowning achievement man will you stop <laughs> I enjoyed it <laughs> Sarah who do we have next. JC from EP adds more votes for Kane, Mankind, Rey Mysterio, and Vader. Hey, we've we've heard all of these names, so Sarah, who do we have next? Polishes votes for Mil Mascaris, Tiger Mask, Vader, and Rey Mysterio. So another person that is a Mil Mascaris fan there, Brian. And a mention for Tiger Mask. Tiger Mask, a legendary Japanese cartoon come to life when New Japan purchased the rights to it. You must have done a lot of research today, huh? I did do a did lot of research. Did you come up with all this stuff, like, just today? Yeah. You did? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, I mean, the, on, on the wrestlers that I wasn't, you know, too familiar with, I, I did educate myself on, on you know, who they were. Right. We for know the this, sake of this. Who knows by heart? But Tiger Mask, I, I am a big fan of Tiger Mask because of his feud with, uh, with Dynamite Kid in the early 80s. And then when Tiger Mask decided he, he, he left New Japan, he formed a another promotion and all japan pro wrestling purchased the character of tiger mask and gave that to mitsuharu misawa who was big in the 80s for his feud well i'm sorry in the 90s for his feud with kenta kobashi and toshiaki kawada uh you know broke away from all japan formed pro wrestling noah nice story ian <laughs> I'm Mike Tanay over here. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> now, how are you? So how old is this dude? Do you know? How old's that guy? How old's Paulicious? Yeah. 
I don't I don't know this Polishes personally. Well, no. Then I can't I can't say if he's ever seen a Mascaris mask okay. match. Oh, I'm sure he at least saw one mask. He's got, he's got a million of them. Other than the Royal Rumble '97 match, <laughs> where he eliminated himself. He jumped off the top rope because he didn't want to job to anybody. That's so exactly he wanted to job like to himself. <laughs> oh, you hit the nail right on the head. <laughs> Did you say hi to uh, Tyrell and Jane today? <laughs> Hello, Terry, Tyrell, and yeah. Jane <laughs> in Minneapolis, Minnesota. You hear that, Gorilla? Terry, Tyrell, and Jane. Yeah. The... <laughs> there might even be, like, another one in there, too, like a Tammy. Really? Tammy, Terry, Tyrell, and Jane, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, the, those first six WrestleManians, <laughs> listen for it. Jesse the Body on commentary. Sarah, who do we have next? Next up is Mike the Wolverine with Jushin Liger, Kane, Hayabusa, and Rey Mysterio. So Mike the Wolverine giving us another vote for Hayabusa. One thing that I always found hilarious was when Terry Funk would go to Japan and he'd wrestle for FMW and it would always be opposing Hayabusa, but nine times out of ten he would say, I'm gonna get that Hayabusa. <laughs> you know, you, you need to watch out doing that Terry Funk voice. Yeah, I saw him very angry on Instagram. Yeah, I'm here and he's looking for you. Yeah, yeah, Terry Maybe Funk. not you, but... No, maybe, hopefully not me. Someone. But Especially. wouldn't that be awesome if he was looking for me and, like, he had his branding iron? I'd just have him brand me. I'd just get a tattoo <laughs> of the brand. Well, I wouldn't need to because I'd be branded, so... Well, didn't he think you were sick for one his tattoo on your back in the first place? He did. He did. I, I asked him to sign my back and he said, You want me to do what to your ass? <laughs> I said, No, sign my back. Well, what would you want to do that for? And my dad was there, and he's looking at my dad, and my dad's just, you know, shrugging. Like, hey, that's that's what he likes. That's, that's, what, he what, wants. He likes. that's what he wants. That's what he likes. He likes <laughs> your signature on his back. And Harley Race in the background just looking like, what on God's green earth is going on? <sighs> Harley Race and Kane with his voice box kind of sound familiar. Imagine, Poor Harley. Imagine, what? Poor Harley Race. Oh, yeah. Sarah, who do we have next? The list from On the Mark shirts includes Mr. Olympia, La Parca, Vader, and Black Tiger. So Mr. Olympia... Who? <laughs> Mr. Olympia, who you know, that? from Mid-South Wrestling. That's about as much as I know about him, but I do know that he was the original Mr. Perfect. He went by the name Mr. Perfect, like, really? back in the day. Was it like Mr. Perfect, Mr. Olympia? No, he went by, like, his real name, Jerry Stubbs. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. I thought maybe it was like Ken Patera under a mask. Yeah, you would you would think so, you know. The Olympian. Or like, isn't Arnold Schwarzenegger, wasn't he Mr. Olympia? Yeah, I, believe it, I think so. So, but yeah, you know, Mid-South Wrestling mentioned there. La Parca, there's another very unique looking masked wrestler. The full body suit looking like a skeleton. The chairman. The chairman, yes, the chairman of WCW and... Even had a little feud with Sabu in the, the early 2000s for Major League Wrestling and proved that he he can wrestle hardcore matches. And then Black Tiger, Black Tiger uh, was created, you know, an, another creation, the uh, the rival of Tiger Mask. And uh, that was first portrayed by Mark Rollerball Rocco. But the second portrayal, or the most famous portrayal of Black Tiger was Eddie Guerrero. Oh, that's, that was Black Tiger? That was Black Tiger. I did not know that. Yep, Eddie Guerrero was Black Tiger. And also, at one time, Black Tiger was Rocky Romero. Sounds familiar. Yeah, Rocky Romero, he's in New Japan. Um, he... he okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you know him, you know him. <laughs> well, it sounds familiar. Didn't he wrestle in the States, too? Yeah, in Ring of Honor. <laughs> well, I mean, I would probably know him from Ring of Honor more than I would know him from New Japan. But he made more of an impact in New Japan. And he's still in New Japan. Yeah, but here's the thing, Ian. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you know this. Yeah. We live in America, <laughs> not Japan. So, like, yeah, he made a, he might have been a big deal in Japan, but yeah. I would probably still know okay. him. <laughs> okay. Well, he was in the Havana Pitbulls. The tag team of the Havana Pitbulls. No dice. Okay. Okay. Not a problem. Sarah, who do we have next? Hunter the River Dweller votes for Kane... Mankind, Mr. Wrestling, and Jushin Liger. 
Okay, so Mr. Wrestling. The first Mr. Wrestling. Tim Woods. Okay. He was in the plane. The, the plane crash in 1975 with Johnny Valentine, with Ric Flair. Um, Did he live? He lived, yeah, he lived. They all lived, right? No, no, not all of them did. Johnny Valentine, um, he died, and the pilot died. But Ric Flair broke his back, but, you know, recovered. But, um, yeah, Mr. Wrestling, he was... uh, So did he wrestle after that? He did wrestle after that. Very briefly. Very briefly. Until when? For, well, here's the thing. He tried to wrestle a week after that. And the reason why he tried to wrestle a week after that is because he wrestled under two identities. He wrestled as Mr. Wrestling, and he wrestled under his real name. So to protect his character, people had heard, you know, oh, Mr. Wrestling, you know, got hurt in a plane crash. But if they were to say that this other guy, you know, his real name, was also injured, you know... And did he go through with it? Yeah, he went through with it, but he he, he was hurt. He was too hurt. He couldn't... You know, but for the sake of the, the business, he went out there and performed anyway, not as you know, Mr. Wrestling. So that happened in 1975. 1975, yeah. I was born in 1982. Yeah. So how the hell? Yeah. Would I would I know this? Well, you know, if you went back, if you went on YouTube, if you, you know, if you were just curious about wrestling history and moseyed along and found, oh hey, look at Mr. Wrestling. You were born after me. I was, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what like so? Do you just go on? on the internet and just be like what happened in wrestling 1975 sometimes or what? like it all you'll like, do that yeah or like it all like interlaces together like you, you look at each promotion like okay so you look at WWWF and you, you see everything that happened that year and then you see oh, okay well well Jim Crockett Promotions was also running at that same time so what was happening in those companies and then you see the companies like uh, Mid-South or you see World Class or you see AWA and you know, but they all just start, you know, piecing together. But why would one care about what happened back then? <laughs> <laughs> just, to, just for history's sake, historical purposes, I guess. <sighs> just, you know, I like brushing up on my wrestling history. 1985 and on for me. That's it, huh? Sometimes not even that. Yeah? What about, no, come on, 1984 when Hogan beat Sheik. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but, like, no, 1985, WrestleMania... <laughs> One and on. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's where it all began. Right. <laughs> WrestleMania 1. <laughs> that works. What do we got, Sarah? The next submission is from Jeffy from the Riv. Rey Mysterio, Kane, Mankind, and Vader. Yeah. So, the, you know, the names that we've seen more than any other, I would say. Rey Mysterio, Kane, Mankind, Vader. That's, uh... See, that's more of, like, my pace right there. I like that list. Do you like that list? The more mainstream guys. <laughs> yeah. With the masks. Yeah. That, that that's cool. And when you really think about it, it's it's the mainstream names that are going to get mentioned the most because we we have the most exposure to those. You know, we're not uh we're not well versed in lucha libre. Even I, Brian, am not well versed in lucha libre. Oh, you mean you don't sit there and watch like Univision for AAA? No, lucha libre was never really my thing. Never really my thing. Well, Lucha Underground. You watch any of that? I did watch some of that, and I enjoyed what I saw. So why don't you still watch it? Uh, I I can't I can't find it. Weren't they on Netflix? Oh, are they on Netflix? They were. I don't know if they oh, still are. I'll take a look, but I did enjoy that because I mean names like Brian Cage, Ricochet's on there. Um, Brian Cage. That's what you're gonna go with? Yeah, sure. <laughs> he was on there, wasn't he? Yeah, he probably, but. <laughs> I did see uh, a casket match on there that I thought was incredible. Mil Muertes in Monster Matanza, I oh, believe. Wonderful. But Sounds it was good. They had, you know, special effects and stuff. And Sounds like a bond burner. It was. And the, 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 the temple, the Lucha temple, the Aztec temple that they had there. I Let think. me ask you a question. Okay. Do you like intergender, intergender matches? Oh, this is interesting. Sometimes. Sometimes. If it's... If it's a believable back and forth contest, sure. But um, do you believe that Tessa Blanchard beat Brian Cage for a title? No. Like, is that believable to you? D- no, no, I don't. But think that's so. what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think so. But I, I guess it depends. You know, it depends on who it is. Because I, I know Candice LeRae has had great matches against, uh, you know, even the Young Bucks and 
Johnny Gargano and things like that, so she can hold her own. But even Sarah Del Rey was the Chikara champion, and Chikara is a company in itself that has dozens of masked char- characters. Yeah, I know, but is it believable that, you know, a woman can overpower a man? Depends on the woman. In, in the wrestling... But, like, again... Like it depends on the woman. Like, it, like, like Nicole talk- Bass was believable. Yeah, China was yeah, believable. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. But, no, like, I couldn't see, for example, Charlotte Flair. I couldn't see Charlotte Flair going for the world title, she's but probably I wouldn't the biggest be surprised. They she's, that's what I'm saying, that she's probably the biggest they have right yeah. now, right? Yeah, and, like, Becky Lynch, I, I couldn't... So, even though, like, Candice LeRae held her own against the Young Bucks and things like that, yeah. it's not believable. I don't think so, personally, okay. though. I, you know, I don't want to look like yeah. a jackass because you know, no. I, I sound sexist, but it's not being sexist. I think, we, Sarah, do you agree? Like honestly, do, in a wrestling match, in a wrestling match, within the conf- confines of those ropes, is it believable for a woman to beat a man? I guess it depends on the matchup and who the people are. But if they, if she's bigger, but you know, not, no. Maybe it comes down to technique. Oh, you guys just don't want to get into it. Well, no, I, I think it's a real cut and dry thing. You don't want to sound like a jerk. It, no, but think about it. If they put, say, if they put say Orange Cassidy against, I don't know, Rhea Ripley, that's kind of believable. Rhea Ripley. Rhea. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, you know, similar sizes, I could, I could, you know, somewhat believe. But, I mean... I agree. There was a... Okay, there's a scene from the movie True Romance where Alabama Whirly... Uh, enters her hotel room and you know there's a mob guy and he's waiting for her husband Clarence but you know he's gonna know where the money is so he just beats the hell out of her but you know she gets some good shots in right no I agree with the Rhea Ripley and Orange Cassidy um, comparison mm-hmm. I do but I'm talking about strictly sorry, I'm talking about Tessa Blanchett <laughs> and Brian Cage there's no way <laughs> Tessa Blanchard beats Brian Cage. I'm sorry. He's a monster. No, I agree. I, I, I agree. I totally agree with you, yes. I don't know how she even beat him. Like, I didn't watch I, it. I didn't watch it either. I don't know, but I know she didn't drop the title. And then, yeah, and then she doesn't drop the title. Like, yeah. It's even worse. I know. So you give I, him... I, don't, I don't think that was a good move on their part. <sighs> Stupid. No, I, I don't like it. Well, it'll never last. Well, they have, I guess I say it never last. They've gone this long. Yeah. Right? Jeez. Yes, they have. They have, but... uh. Tessa Blanchard and Brian Cage. I don't think either one of those guys wear masks. Huh? <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Oh. Sarah, what do we have next? Cashman and Plymouth submits Jushin Liger, Ultimo Dragon, La Parca, and Rey Mysterio. So four guys right there, all about not just good wrestling skills, but all about presentation there. Colorful characters. Liger, Dragon, La Parca, Rey Mysterio. High Flyers. Do you associate Masks with high flyers? Yeah, definitely. I thought you were going to ask me if I was a high flyer. So oh, yeah, sure. No, definitely not. High roller, maybe. <laughs> stay stay grounded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course I, I associate them with masks because that's what I used to see back in the day. 96, 97, 98. You're used, yeah, so you're... Okay, you know, so you're... Ultimal Dragon. I like the Ultimal Dragon pick by uh, Bobby back a few lists ago. I used to like Ultimal, Ultimal Dragon. Yeah. It was one of my favorites. But why is it that the mask is associated with high flyers, though? Like, why? There's a lot of... Because you know, they all came in from Mexico and Japan and stuff. Okay. And that's so the, what, that's the what origins, Bischoff did. The origins yeah. of the mask. And when we watched them on WCW, he, mm-hmm. Bischoff was bringing all those guys in from, like, you know, Mexico, then ECW, and, you know, and even ECW. Psychosis, Mysterio. Hoovy. Hoovy. You know? Yeah. I think, okay. uh... Definitely it's an association there. All right. Sarah. Who we got? Next we have the list from Adam in Jacksonville, Mil Muscaris, Ray Mysterio, Mankind, and Kane. And hey, Mankind and Kane, they were tag team champions at one point. Yeah, they were. Two of Paul Bearer's clients right there. And they weren't high flyers. They were not high flyers. Look at that. So Adam had two high flyers and two non-high flyers. But you could argue Mankind was a high flyer when he was getting thrown off the top of the cell. Yeah, he was. Two crazy bastards. But you know what? Even Mankind, too, he did that dive off the apron. That elbow off the apron. Yeah. Then, that was Cactus Jack, wasn't it? Yeah, but he did it as Mankind, too. Did he? Yeah, he pretty much kept the same moveset. 
I would hope so. <laughs> Same guy. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, Dude Love didn't... Like, Dude Love did Sweet Shin music, and Mankind didn't. Yeah, you talk about finishes, though. Okay. Was that a finish of? Sweet Shin? Sweet Shin music. Was that a finish? He'd load up the band, I kick him in the shin, it. but then... No, but then he would still do the double arm DD too. Right. That would never work on Ronnie Garvin. Never. Master of the Garvin <laughs> stomp. Master of the Shin God. <laughs> Master of the boring matches. Uh, master beta. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, who do we have next? The first time submission from contesting wrestling podcast is Rey Mysterio, Jushin Liger, The Great Sasuke, and Tiger Mask. So the contesting wrestling podcast, another great wrestling podcast out there. You can check them out on YouTube as well. It's nice to see them with the first time submission this week. And yeah, we've got another vote here for the Great Sasuke and another vote for Tiger Mask. Uh, Brian, did you ever see any of the uh, Tiger Mask Dynamite Kid matches? No. How about Tiger Mask versus Bret Hart? No. No? Oh, okay. I told you, I don't know about Japan. I know, but sometimes I'm going to throw these things at you. And it's, well, a, good, you know it's a good opportunity. Why don't you give me homework then? Why don't you no, say, you know what? No. Hey. Here's my list from Instagram, and Tiger Mask is on this freaking thing like five times. All right, so I need you to watch this Bret Hart match. And I'll go back and I'll try to find the damn Bret Hart match against Tiger Mask, just so I can say yes, I've watched it, and I can speak about it when you ask me. Why are you getting all hot about it? <laughs> because I, you're asking me about Japan. You're asking me. All right, have you ever seen any Tiger Mask the, uh, Dynamite Kid matches? Did the Tiger Mask ever wrestle in WWF from 1985 on? From 1985 on, no. All right, then. No, I've okay. never seen a Tiger Mask match. Okay. God damn it. It's really eats you up, huh? A little bit. Okay. But maybe it it could inspire you, you know? Like, you could hear a name uh, mentioned on the list that might spark your interest to go check them out on YouTube. No. No? Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Sarah, who do we have next? Another first time list from Rassler Art 118 Mil Mascaris, The Destroyer, The Masked Superstar, and Mr. Wrestling 2. So, a lot of new names mentioned here. The Destroyer, also known as Dr. X. You're a big Dr. X fan, aren't you, Brian? Oh, it was Mr. X. Same guy. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You're a fan of Mr. X. I'm not a fan of Mr. X at all. Okay, well, you know. He came Dr. out in the Boston Garden. I, I thought it took me to the Boston Garden to watch him at, to watch the, the show. And Mr. X came out, and I started crying. I was like four years old. I made him take me home, and I didn't want any part of it. Well, all right, then. That was like the second match. Oh, he was wow. Pissed. He wasn't happy. I wouldn't be happy either. I wasn't but, happy at all. But yeah, Dr. X also... Uh, <laughs> you no, know, the worst part is he hated wrestling. Yeah, you've told me that. <laughs> Dad hated wrestling, but he, you know, wanted to make his son happy yeah. and take him to wrestling. And then I made him take me home the second match. <laughs> freaking Mr. X. But Dr. X, or better known as the Destroyer, was most known for uh, wrestling in the AWA and also wrestling in Japan. All Japan. Having a great feud with Mil Mascaris. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> also mentioned on this list is the Masked Superstars. The Masked Superstar, who I know you know, Bill Eady. Bill Eady, yeah. Bill Eady who... You know, he had, a, he had a feud with uh, Bob Backlund. I know it's prior to 1985. It was 1983. But, you know, he had a feud with Bob Backlund. He attacked Bob Backlund's protege, Eddie Gilbert, uh, given the swinging neck breaker on the concrete floor. Eddie, Gil Eddie Gilbert was Bob Backlund's protege. Yes. Wow. Yep, yep. <laughs> and Eddie Gilbert uh, sustained a so-called neck injury and, you know, had to, had to learn to talk all over again and, yeah, went through a very speedy recovery. I mean, like less than a month to return to face the masked superstar. And yeah, he lost. So. Oh, Eddie Gilbert lost? Yeah. After he hurt his neck? Yeah. So he got no payback? No, no payback. Yikes. No payback. And that feud with Bob Backlund really didn't have much. Of, I mean, they, they fought, but it never really ended conclusively because it was always, you know, they'd brawl to the back or it'd be, you know, it would just go unresolved and it never was resolved because then Hulk Hogan came in and Bob Backlund was out the door. Sure was. So, and also mentioned on Wrestler Art 118, who 
has a very good Instagram page with really cool wrestling art that you should definitely check out. He has Mr. Wrestling 2. Mr. Wrestling 2 was brought in to be the tag team partner of Mr. Wrestling. Um, and then he really, you know, became an instant star down in the Jim Crockett territory. He trained Magnum TA. And there were famous vignettes where he trained Magnum TA and, you know, taught him to do all these moves. And then in the end, Mr. Wrestling turned heel on Magnum TA. He was a villain. Then they became the Ding Dongs. <laughs> Is that true? No, that's not true. That's not true. They're not the Ding Dongs. They're not the Ding Dongs. Those were two other masked wrestlers. But I'm glad you mentioned some masked wrestlers. That's <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very happy you contributed to this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I almost wonder if you should put a mask on. <laughs> Put a mask on and just see myself out. <laughs> you can use the cane voice box whenever you want to chime in. I like that pick. <laughs> well, what the hell, man? I'm hearing, like, you know, Mr. Pogo and... Nobody and said Leather, Mr. Pogo. Leatherface. Leatherface and, you know, yeah. Tiger Mask 2. Yeah. Mr. Wrestling 4. Mm. Viano 5. Come on. We haven't gone to the Vianos yet, but they're coming up. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, what do we have next? Steve the Savage brings us Rey Mysterio, Mankind, Abyss, and Mil Mascaris. There you go, Abyss. You know Abyss. I know Abyss. Sure. The big wrestler. The very large the very man, big yes. Big man, Chris yes. Park. Yeah. Joseph Park. Joseph Park. I believe it's true. Well, but, I mean, he's had some great matches. I mean, he had a great cage match with AJ Styles. It's really known for his TNA matches. Total nonstop action, that is. I would hope so. I mean, <laughs> that's the only place he's ever been, right? He's never been to ROH or anything. He was in ROH for a little while. As Abyss? As Abyss. Really? Yes. He was. He wrestled for uh, Prince Nana's embassy with Jimmy Rave. This ROH show is going to be amazing. <laughs> Some people say that Abyss was just a, a copy of Mankind and Kane put together. What do you What do you have to say to that? I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how about how about when Hulk Hogan came to TNA and he wanted to make uh, Abyss the the top top draw top draw the top star? Well, Hogan likes those big big guys. Yeah, liked a few of those guys, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you think Abyss could have been a good top guy? Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay. The, I don't know. It depends. Who was there though at the time? Was Kurt Angle there? Kurt Angle was there. Samoa Joe was AJ there. AJ Styles. Scott Steiner. Come on. Yeah, I know. No. I know. Sting. Sting was there. Sting, okay. Nash. RVD. Yeah. No. But I guess, like, homegrown. Abyss was homegrown, right? He was homegrown. Yeah, one of so, the few. Yeah, I would say. Just... Turned down turned down a WrestleMania match with The Undertaker. Did he really? Yeah, they offered him, you know, a big, uh, big-time deal. Oh, you know what? You, you kind of were right. Because okay. Abyss's real name... Is Christopher Joseph Parks. See? So you were right, Chris Parks. You're just calling him by his real name. Look at that. <clears throat> Lucky guess. I know. I know. That's Sarah with some on the fly research. We don't have Pat R here this week. That's what we're missing. I think we're missing the, missing the presence that. of Pat R. Yeah, maybe that's Rile us up. That's why I'm not on my game today. You're not on your no, game. I'm not on my game because people are mentioning all these Japanese wrestlers and Mexicans. I just don't know them. Okay. Okay. I think it. You're getting too mad over this. It's all right. It's all good. I told you it was a bad idea. Ah, <laughs> ah. I know it's Halloween. Hogwash. Yeah, it's Halloween. I wanted to talk about masks. Stop being a child. Tis the season. I'll never stop. You know how long I'm gonna be a child for, Brian? Forever. 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 You ever right. see that footage? I. You showed me that last week. I think. All right. Oh, you sent it to me. All right. <laughs> Sarah, who do we have next? Hunter LNR votes for El Santo, Rey Mysterio, Jushin Liger, and Mankind. I know, I know. But El Santo is really considered one of the most famous luchadors of all time. Also a big movie star as well. From where? Mexico? Mexico. Mexico. Well, I don't know. It could be Mexico. It could be Japan. You're right. It could be. It could be. But it seems, I mean, it seems to me like, you know, the... The, the origins of the mask came from Mexico. 
and the talents from Japan that went on to be masked wrestlers trained in Mexico. They trained that Japanese style. I mean, even Chris Jericho wrestled under a mask for a little bit. As what? El Corazon de Leon. I could have, no. It's Corazon. Okay. Well, no, that's probably the Portuguese version. Corazon. Corazon de Leon. It's Heart of Lion. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there was a Z in there. No. I don't think so. Oh, all right. Well, either way, it was also Super Liger. <clears throat> feuded with uh, Jushin Liger. Okay. Sarah, who do we have next? The list from Phil Squared includes Mr. America, Ultimo Dragon, Vader, and Mankind. You know, Mr. America. <clears throat> I think that was Hulk Hogan. Sure was. Are you sure, though? Because you don't... I'm not sure, because he left before before we could get some resolution, so... I mean, I guess anything is possible, but I mean, the way he ripped his shirt, the blonde mustache, brother, the feather yeah. boas. Yeah, there's a lot of good impersonators out there, though. Dude! <laughs> <laughs> Another vote for Mr. Asai Berry himself, Ultimo Dragon. So, let me get this straight. They have Mr. America. Yes. And Ultimo Dragon on the same list. As well as Vader and Mankind. Mr. America's gotta be a rib. I think so. <laughs> Just like Camonito. Oh, the little guy? The little guy, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I was I was surprised to see Mr. America. He was he was on my list of mass wrestlers that I did not think were going to get named. Yeah, like talk about because they didn't get named. <laughs> yeah. But uh no, he he got a mention, so yeah, Mr. America. There you go. There's there's your mention. Does demolition count? They came out with masks, but they didn't Hey, count. I didn't even think about that. That's that's a good question. That is a good question. Hmm. And they, that... they did wrestle with the masks for a little while, too. Did they? At the very, not the very end, but towards the end, they, they did. They wrestled with masks. And at the beginning of the 1990 Survivor Series, they do, like, all the pictures of the guys on the teams and all of Demolition. They're all in masks. wrestling masks, not, like, the helmet-style oh, right. masks that right. they wore. Right. So, yeah. So, Sarah, who do we have next? The submission from Pete Bow Now You Know is Rey Mysterio, Blue Blazer, The Patriot, and Kane. So a vote for Owen Hart's character, the Blue Blazer, right there. Also a vote for the, uh, vote for the Patriot, Del Wilkes. I know, one of Pat's favorites. Pat loves I'm surprised the Patriot wasn't on Pat's list. Me too. But are we talking about Del Wilkes or Salvatore Sincere? That is true. Salvatore Sincere. It's got to be Del Wilkes. Yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be. Sal Sincere. Bought the gimmick from Del Wilkes, and <laughs> now he wrestles as both Sal Sincere. I, I don't know if he still wrestles, actually, but... I used to love the Patriot. You did, yeah. I did, yeah. Like in WCW? I thought he was really, yeah, like I thought yeah. he was really, really good. Yeah. And then when he came in to feud with Bret Hart and stuff like that, I thought he was pretty good. Yeah, for some reason, I guess Owen didn't care for him. Really? Or it didn't work well in a match with Owen, and Owen gave the thumbs down. Before you knew it, the Patriot was gone. And the Blue Blazer, of course, you know, tragic ending for there for the Blue Blazer, but it's nice to see him get a mention on here. One of Owen Hart's characters. Yeah, but is he going to make, like, does he make the Mount Rushmore of all time great? Well, at this Masks. point, he's definitely not going to make it. No, I know not now, but I'm saying, like, for someone to put them on their list. True. No, he's, he's not going to make it. But you want to know a very interesting, you know, similarity between the Blue Blazer and the Patriot? Heck yes, I do. Their, <laughs> their Jack's Pacific action figures. It's the same old. It's the same old head. They used it for the Blue Blazer. So if you look at your Blue Blazer action figure, it's it's got stars painted on it and USA on the back and big eagle on the front. But they just painted over it because, well, the kids will never notice. No, of course not. Jack's Pacific insulted our intelligence. I never noticed it, so. Oh, well. Sorry did you the, notice it? Or sorry you, for the insult. Did you did you read it somewhere, or did you notice it yourself? Of course I read it on a message board, Brian. I was a kid. Well, I know, but I didn't know if you had both of them. <laughs> and then you took them both, like one on the left hand, one on your right hand, and you're like looking at both of them, and you're like, hey, this is the same thing. No, no. I, you, you could tell from like the prototype pictures that they showed. Like You could just tell from looking at it. Because, like. because at like 12 years old, you were looking at prototype pictures. Of course I was. Come of on. course I was. <laughs> Ringside Collectibles fan for life. I need a drink. <laughs> Something stiff. Oh, he's really going to drink. 
Okay, Sarah, who do we have next? Billy the Biker's Mount Rushmore has Rey Mysterio, Mankind, Vader, and Kane. Alright, so we are starting to see a lot of the, the same names mentioned here, so why don't I have you just read the next one, Sarah. Another first-time contributor, Jonah from the Recap, Rewind, Relive, submits The Great Muda, Rey Mysterio, Psychosis, and Kane. I want to mention this. I've been talking to Jonah today from the Recap, Rewind, Relive, I guess you would call it a video podcast, on YouTube. He has a show where he has two guests. One is a wrestling legend, and one of them is a wrestling newcomer, and they have a nice discussion about wrestling. I was very impressed by it. Um, I saw some guests. He had Teddy Long. He had Jake the Snake. His latest episode, Sam Houston. So, yeah, pretty cool show. Worth checking out. Send me the link to that. I absolutely will. And he gives us another vote for Psychosis, but he gives us a vote for The Great Muda. I was going to say, that was face paint, right? Well, The Great Muda had face paint. <laughs> but then, he debuted a new mask in the early 2000s. Looks... Kind of similar to Darth Maul, actually. And I know Darth Maul was face paint, but, you know, just imagine Darth Maul as a mask. But yeah, the Great Muda, believe it or not, I feel like he's been wrestling longer now with the mask than with the face paint. But that's debatable, too, because he wears face paint under the mask. So either way, the Great Muda, he's got a cool mask, so... I don't understand he gets that. A why, mention. why put face paint under your mask? Hey, Batman does it, too. <clears throat> yeah, Batman's not a wrestler. No, but, you know, to hide your identity, to say you put face paint around your yeah, eyes. Yeah, we already know what he looked like. He wore face paint before he wore the mask. Who? Muda. Oh, yeah. No, it's just for presentation's sake. Maybe, maybe he got sick and tired of, you know, the same old face paint designs, and he wanted these, this mask. Muda was all about the entrance and the presentation th towards the end, you know, towards the end of his career. and Of course, the green mist. Sure. You've, okay. you've convinced me. <laughs> I don't think I really have, but... <laughs> Sarah, who do we have next? Steve from Connecticut, Rhode Island votes for El Santo, Rey Mysterio, Tiger Mask, and Mankind. So, two luchador legends right there. El Santo, as we've already discussed. Movie star, wrestling star, Rey Mysterio. Arguably, no, I'd say without question, the most famous luchador of all time. He's number one on the list, right? He, he's like... Rey Mysterio? Yeah. He has to be number one on the list. He's number one on the list, yeah. yeah. Can I uh, try, I guess, number two? Sure. Mankind? Maybe. Maybe. You don't know yet? You haven't tallied these up? Oh, of course they tallied. Of course they tallied, but we got to save that for the big reveal at the end. Well, I wanted one and two. Or are you just doing a one and two? Yeah. Give me two. something, man. What I have you? nothing else. I am bringing nothing to the table on this podcast. <laughs> Come on, you can't, you can't do a good Tiger Mask impression? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, have some fun. Have some fun, Brian. Have some fun. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We, we found the new tiger mask right here. Sarah, who do we have next? Next up is Jordan in Tennessee. Rey Mysterio, Kane, Jushin Liger, and El Santo. Wow, another vote for El Santo. And I want to change my pick. El Santo's number two. Number two? Okay. So Rey Mysterio and El Santo? Yes. Okay. In El Santo. Okay. Where's he from again? Mexico. Okay. Yeah. One of the... One of the... Legendary grandfathers of Lucha Libre. El Santito. El Santito. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about names that aren't mentioned now. I'm going to mention some luchadors here. I know you're not going to know who they are, but they're they're, they're worth mentioning, okay? Uh, do you remember Mystico? Mystico, I understand, I understand, but just work with me here. Mystico, he was signed to the WWE by Triple H. It was Triple H's first big signing, and they made Mystico, Mystico Sin Cara. And, yeah. And it just didn't work out, so they fired him and sent him back to Mexico and had another guy. Oh, that's Del Sol guy. Samurai Del Sol? Yeah, him. That's Kalisto. Kalisto, right? Kalisto, yeah. Very, very talented. And he's in the Lucha House Party. I was going to I was gonna mention that eventually, but, but yeah. why haven't they done more with him? I don't know, because he's awesome. Yeah. And he had that great spot in that TLC match where he hit some... Put, some, put somebody through a ladder. They flipped them off the top of the ladder. Oh, those are the bullfighters. What were the names? 
El Matadors. El Matadors. Yeah, Primo and Epico. Yeah, sure. And, you know, more names I'm going to mention here. Blue Demon. Blue Demon is also with El Santo and Mil Mascaris. Very, very famous luchador. A name that doesn't get mentioned on here, surprisingly. I thought they did, but Juventud Guerrero does not get mentioned on here. Hoovy Juice. Yeah, Hoovy Juice deserves a vote from somebody somewhere. Uh, Dos Kairos. El Hijo del Santo. The son of El Santo. Yes, the son of El Santo. Uh, didn't, you know, achieve as much success as his father, but still on there. El Kanek. El Kanek, who actually body slammed Andre the Giant. Blue Demon Jr. Blue Panther. And the Vianos. What about the Pink Panther? The Pink Panther did not get a mention on here. Dang it. But how about Dr. Wagner Jr.? Conan. Conan had a mask for a little while. Oh, I was going to say, I saw a match with Viano number 5 and Blue Panther the other day that was just bloody and brutal. Um, Delirious from Ring of Honor. He's actually the booker of Ring of Honor now. Uh, what about Jeff Hardy's alter ego, Willow? Do you remember Willow from TNA? Was that a mask? That was a mask. Yeah, he wore a mask. He's like, man, I'm Willow, remember. man. I'm not Jeff Hardy. I'm Willow, man. Uh, well, you mentioned some uh, American wrestlers. Luchasaurus. Luchasaurus. Okay. How about Curry Man? Yeah, I remember him. That Christopher, Christopher Daniels. Daniels. Yes. The Hurricane. Yeah. Staying back. There's a hurricane coming through. A big name that does not get a mention on here. Who? The Fiend. Oh, yeah. Nobody mentioned The Fiend. How did, how did nobody mention him? He's super relevant right now. He's got a really cool mask, really cool character. Just proves no one cares about today's right <laughs> People are probably like, who the heck's The Fiend? <laughs> but uh, another name I wanted to mention, we mentioned Super Delphin earlier, and um, another sea creature friend of his, Grand Naniwa. Oh, Grand Naniwa, dude. The was crab. so awesome. Yeah, the crab. I have no idea who you're talking about. <laughs> well, he, he, had, he did make an ECW appearance one time. But, uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I really thought, you know, you, uh, you're a big Grand Naniwa fan. He wrestled for ECW. He did. Well, it was, like, on a, on a fan cam well, and from, yeah, like, from well, Poughkeepsie. He was, okay, he was supposed to be on Barely Legal, but he was injured. So somebody had to take his So place. I'm supposed to know who Grand Naniwa is because he was supposed to wrestle on a big pay-per-view but didn't. But in the build-up to Barely Legal, he, he also... But <laughs> he just, I'm going to buy you a Grand Naniwa mask for Christmas. Well, Sarah just showed it to me on the phone. It looks like a, a big big lily. <laughs> big lily? <laughs> like a flower. Oh, okay. Like I thought like you saw him and the first wrestling name that came to mind was Big Lily. No, he looks like a flower. He's got like... Stuff coming out the side of his mask. And it has crab claws. That's oh, so I saw it quick. I didn't realize those yeah. crab crab claws. Uh, FMW had a guy, Biometric DNA. He was um, a, a, basically a sea creature, another sea creature with a giant crab claw. Had scales and everything. Um, Mortis, Mortis from WCW. Glacier. Glacier, yes. Wrath. Yeah, Wrath came out with the mask. Now here's. Here's, don't worry, this is the, the last last one I'm mentioning here, kind of. Uh, the Midnight Rider, Dusty Rhodes under a mask, defeated Ric Flair to win the NWA World Championship, and then a few years later, Dusty Rhodes and Magnum TA formed a tag team, the James Boys, and they feuded with the Midnight Express. So like the Pale Rider? <laughs> the Pale Rider, yes, sure. The Midnight Rider. The Midnight Rider, yeah, like the Almond Brothers song. Sarah, who do we have next? Angie and Tiverton adds votes for Mankind, Rey Mysterio, Vader, and Kane. And if we have a list from Angie, then we have to have a list from... Our last submission this episode is from Johnny D. Ultimo Dragon, Kane, Rey Mysterio, and Mankind. So there you have it, Brian. Those are all of our submissions this week. That's more of my pace right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Johnny D. <laughs> so yes, Ultimo Dragon, Kane, Rey Mysterio, Mankind, getting those last votes in right there. Brian, dare I ask, who is on your list? Who is on your Mount Rushmore of masked wrestlers? So, you know, I didn't watch a lot of WCW, like I said before, but I watched enough of it. And a lot of them, my favorite masked wrestlers came from WCW because of, you know, the 
the lightweights and light heavyweights there, whatever. Whatever you want to call them. Cruiserweights. The cru- there you go. There you go. Cruiserweights. We forgot to mention Cinco Pay. But anyway. Cinco Pay. Yeah, that's right. All right. Can I get on my list now? I'm sorry. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> so it's Rey Mysterio. Psychosis. <clears throat> it's going to be uh, Ultimo Dragon. I like Ultimo Dragon. Nice. He's, you know, he's good. And Mankind. How can you go with not have mankind? Well, I know I said, you know, he's, you know what he looks like, and yeah. it's not covering his old face, but still a mask, still an iconic wrestler. Sure. All right. What's your list, Ian? So my list, you have to have Rey Mysterio on there, whether you like him or not. He is the greatest luchador of all time. I didn't put Mil Mascaris on my list. Um, Rey Mysterio is going to make the list whether he likes to or not. <laughs> <laughs> whether yes! Whether he likes it or not. There you go. <laughs> Uh, so I have Rey Mysterio, I have Mankind, love Mankind, love Jushin Liger, and I I got a special place in my heart for Hayabusa. So Rey, Mankind, Liger, Hayabusa, Vader was supposed to be in there, but I just, for reasons that you said, we you know, we've seen Vader take off his mask a lot, a lot of times, even mid-match he'd take off his mask. So as much as I love Vader, he just, he didn't make the cut for me. Sarah. We gotta know who made this Mount Rushmore, so please, could you read the stats? This week's Mount Rushmore of Mass Wrestlers is Rey Mysterio with 23 votes, with 16 votes, Mankind, coming in closely behind with 15 votes each, Jushin Thunder Liger and Kane. The remaining votes are Vader with 11, Ultimo Dragon with 6, Milnascaris with 5, and with 3 each, Hayabusa, The Great Sousuke, Tiger Mask, and El Santo. And concluding with two votes each, Psychosis and La Parca. Well, I think they got it right. Yeah. Ray, Mankind, so. Liger, and Kane. Kane finished higher than I thought he would, but then again, really, he's a great masked character, one of the few great masked characters from WWE. Yeah. So. And masked big men. Yeah. Cause, I mean, they were, there's not a lot of masked big guys. No, there's really not. I mean, beyond Vader. Vader, Kane. Um, I mean, I guess you could say Mankind, too, but... Yeah, the Luchasaurus. Yep, now. that's true. Yeah. All right, so, any uh, any final thoughts on the masked wrestlers list? Thank God it's over. <laughs> well, hopefully you have just as much fun next week <laughs> because we're continuing the Halloween theme. We will be doing the Mount Rushmore of face-painted wrestlers. <laughs> so hopefully, when people are submitting their lists... You have the entertainment factor in mind for Brian's sake so he can do some impressions here as well. But uh, yeah, next week, the Mount Rushmore of face-painted wrestlers. So were there a lot of Japanese face-painted wrestlers? There were, huh? There were a decent amount, but more so American Like Muda. Wrestlers. Yeah, Muda's on there. Great Kabuki's <clears throat> mentioned. Yeah, but you'll see. You'll see something. You know. You'll see something. You know. Kamala's Kamala on there. Kamala. Absolutely. Good. Yes. So I want to announce that today we launched our Facebook page. So look for Pro Wrestling Rushmore on Facebook. Pro Dash Wrestling. Pro Dash Wrestling Rushmore. Is that why you couldn't find it earlier? Possibly. I thought they took it down on you. Oh, I oh I'd hope not. That would be awful. I thought Zucky was like, no way. <laughs> Shucky ducky, no way, Ian. <laughs> Zucky says Shucky ducky. Zucky ducky. <laughs> So yes, yeah, so we are on Facebook. We're also on Instagram, square dot circle dot history, and of course we are on YouTube, the Squared Circle History YouTube page. So like, share, subscribe, drop an elbow on that notification icon. So, for Brian, have a good night, everybody. I'm sorry I didn't bring much to the table today, but I tried. I tried keeping up with the end. He had his headband on. He's sweating. Ew. Sweating bolts over Oh my here. god, it's so warm in here. Carrying, so warm. Carrying this uh this cast on his shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> I had to I had to break out uh, my Mike Tanay this week. I reached out to Mike Tanay this week, but he uh, T Rexed me. I didn't hear hear from him. Screw him. So, yeah, well, hey. And for Sarah. Till next time. This is Ian saying good.